Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Beth Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. And um, we are very glad to have you here in worship with us. Hello, this is Dorothy Spark. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. I'm David Evans, I will be the interpreter today. We begin uh, worship with a call to worship. So please join in as uh, Dorothy indicates uh, for everyone to join in. In the beginning, now and forever, you are God the maker, God the child, and God the spirit. Dancing together, working together, belonging to each other. In the beginning, now and forever, God created the earth and all that is in it. The plants, the animals, the people, everything. Dancing together, working together, belonging to each other. We are all connected because God is kind and good. From the beginning to now and will be forever, we are all united in, God, in God's creation. We dance with the trees in the field. And with the stars in the heavens. We stand with the mountains and we are steady like the seas. We worship you God in the beginning now and forever. As we enter this new worship season and the fall, we enter into it with confession. So today we take some time for confession and forgiveness. What we do affects us. And when we think back about the stories of our lives, the way we think about those stories affects how we think about ourselves. In our actions and in our thoughts, we cannot hide ourselves from God. God is the one who created us. God always recognizes you and me. And God still and always calls us into life together with God. We trust God's mercy and we take this time to come out of our hiding places. During this time, we are honest with God and with ourselves. So 
So together, let us pray our confession. God, you made us from dust and breath. Then you placed us into your amazing creation. You trusted us to live according to your word and guidance. We confess that sometimes we trust other messages more than we trust you. Methods, messages like, you are not enough. What if, and you could be better. Sometimes we believe the lie that you are holding back from us. Sometimes we decide that if we just do it ourselves, we think that we will be happier, smarter, more powerful, and more successful. Sometimes we believe that somehow we are supposed to be more, always be more. God, we have hidden our true selves. We have been ashamed that we are not good enough for you. good enough for others or good enough for ourselves. Forgive us, God, for trusting other messages more than we trust you. Forgive us, God, for believing lies about you. Forgive us, God, for deciding to go ahead without you in our hearts and in our minds. Forgive us, God, when we forget that you made us to be part of the whole community of your creation and world. Amen. My friends, trust this good news. God knows each of us, and God loves each of us. God is always near. Just the way you are, God loves you. For your mistakes and for hiding from God, you are forgiven. Trust that God forgives you. Accept peace with yourself, peace with God, peace with your neighbor and peace with the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The prayer for the day. 
God, you are creator. You designed creation without problems. But we continue to litter your creation. Leaving defects and imperfections. Teach us how to create, not destroy. Help us to uplift, not put down. Lead us to love, not hate. Then your creation may be perfect once again. Amen. Today's Bible lesson is from Genesis chapter 2 and 3. This is how God created the heavens and the earth. When the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, no grass, or plants were growing anywhere. God had not sent any rain yet, and there was no one to work the land. But streams came up from the ground and watered the earth. The Lord took a handful of soil and made a creature God breathed life into the creature, and it started breathing. The Lord God put the creature in the Garden of Eden to take care of it and to look after it. But the Lord said, You may eat the fruit from any tree in the garden, except the one that has the power to let you know the difference between right and wrong. If you eat any fruit from that tree, you will die before the day is over. The snake was sneakier than any other of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. One day, it came to the woman and asked, did God tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered, God said we could eat fruit from any tree in the garden, except the one in the middle. He told us not to eat fruit from that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. No, you won't, the snake replied. God understands what will happen on the day you eat fruit from that tree. You will see what you have done. And you will know the difference between right and wrong, just as God does. The woman stared at the fruit. It looked beautiful and tasty. She wanted the wisdom that it would give to her. And she ate some of the fruit. Her husband was there with her, so she gave some to him, and he ate it too. Right away they saw what they had done, and they realized they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together to make something to cover themselves. Late in the afternoon, a breeze began to blow, and the man and woman heard the Lord God walking in the garden. They were frightened and hid behind some trees. My friends, God comes to us even when we make mistakes. God loves us always. We do not need to hide from God. (sighs) 
Just to let everyone know, uh, here at Bread of Life, we follow a set of Bible readings called the Narrative Lectionary. It's a listing of readings that follows the big arc of the story about what God is doing in the world. And so from September through December, we focus on the Old Testament. And we read stories beginning with the genesis of life in the book of Genesis. Then we journey through other kinds of books in the Bible too. We read from the prophets. We uh, look at visions and dreams. We read so uh, psalms and poems too. The different kinds of writing in the Bible give us a richer understanding and more insight into who God is and helps us better understand the relationships we have with God. And so from now through the end of October, we will explore the themes, the theme of promises made and promises broken. Promises come as the earth and its creatures are formed, and then as their relationship with God sort of starts and stops and stumbles along. We will explore how God is really focused on restoring and reforming or creating relationships with us again and again. We explore how God has to adapt to us people because we're a surprise to God. And we explore how we people have to adapt to God because God is a surprise to us. So that kind of helps set us up because we're now doing something very different than we've been doing um, for the last several weeks here at Bread of Life. And I just want to encourage you to try out our online Bible study. We started uh, this past Wednesday, uh, Bible study on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. It is online, so it's through Zoom. So I know it's not perfect in-person experience, but it's the best that we can do to make sure we're taking care of one another in this time. And um, in that Bible study time, we study the Bible lesson that we'll learn about the next Sunday. So on Wednesday, we'll study what we're talking about next week. So I say all of that to kind of set up where we're going today. And the point of my sermon message today is that it can be so much easier to trust messages that tell us we are not enough. Rather, uh, it's easier to trust those messages than it is to trust God. So I know you want more, like, what messages are you talking about, Michelle? I will get to that in a couple of minutes. So as I said, today we begin this journey again through the Old Testament. And we start with the beginning. Where did people come from? How are we created? What's our connection to the earth? to one another and to God? What happens when we make mistakes and go away from what God wants? And what difference does it make for us now? So 
So this year through the narrative lectionary, we look at the second creation story. There's a, there are two versions of creation in the Bible and we're looking at the second. And you might notice there are some differences in this story compared to the first one. In the first story, creation goes day by day by day. And at the end of each day of creation, God looks and says, it is good. In today's story, there's a different sense of the creation. For one, the people are, God lifts up some dirt and shapes the people, shapes the, the first person. And breathes into it, and then it's alive. And after that first earth person is formed, God declares it is not good for that one to be alone. That person is created for relationship with other people. And so from the one earth person, God creates a pair. A male and a female. And again, in the first creation story, people are created in the image of God. And they are given responsibility to care for and to maintain order in the creation. But here in this second story about creation, when the people become like God, shame and fear rise up. In this second story, people seem to be reaching beyond what God creates them to do. God creates them to serve and tend the earth. And yet, they pay more attention to what they could be rather than what they already are. They start to feel envy. The people are not content. Way, way back then, in the very beginning, they were not content. And I wonder, how often do we still do this? We look out beyond where we are and we wish we could be something different. Someone better at regular exercise, you know, able to get up at the crack of dawn and go for a three mile run every day. Or someone who has more keen observations of the world and so can describe in beautiful language and sign how good or bad the world is. Maybe we wish we were someone who is a better cook so we could just help take care of, of our hungry neighbors. Or we look and say, I should have a cleaner, more tidy home. Oh my gosh, everybody is gonna look at my house and judge me. Or maybe we look at others and we say, oh, they know what they're, what they're doing when they grow up. I, I want to I want to be like that. I wonder how often we find ourselves thinking, okay, if I could just get this like one part of my life figured out, then everything else would just line up. It would all work out. Or at, right now in this season of COVID, how often do we find ourselves thinking, if COVID-19 would just go away, 
then all of our other problems would be solved. All of these years later, after the very beginning of the Bible, we still find ourselves in conversations with that sneaky and shrewd snake. There's gossip, and we compare ourselves to others. And it keeps us from being content as we are. And we are beloved by God. My daughter, Catherine, has often complained about the dilemma, uh, about this dilemma about like, I'm supposed to be something I'm not, or I'm supposed to be better or more. Um, she's complained about lots of times. Because in this day and age in high school, students are expected to be hyper-involved. And it depends on which teacher she talks to, what, how she's supposed to do that. Some teachers will say, get just really involved in one activity. Do everything available in that activity area. And other teachers will advise, no, just get involved in lots of different activities. Do lots of things, try them all out. Because depending on who you listen to, that's what colleges are looking for. Meanwhile, Catherine is struggling to figure out how to do all of those things and have the time she enjoys, uh, have time to do the things that she enjoys doing. I remember one conversation that she and I had about an activity that she lo uh, loves to do, but I commented, well, you know, I think you've probably learned as much in that activity as you're going to learn. So maybe, maybe you should let that one go. And her response several years ago was very insightful and it continues to be insightful and it teaches me uh, often. She said, mom, activities don't always need to be about learning something. Sometimes they can just be fun. So in that first garden at the beginning of time and creation, God placed the people there to thrive and to serve and tend the earth. God created those first people, and God creates us, too, to be involved in relationship, to know and enjoy the earth, to be with others and to enjoy one another, to know and be known by God. People were and are created with all the other animals and the birds and the fish. We were created to find and uh, find life and delight to have joy in the world that God made. But even in that first garden, there were temptations and distractions that pulled people away from those important relationships. And particularly, as those people crossed the boundary 
that God put in place. God said, there's one tree. Don't eat that fruit. And the people ate the fruit. Right? They crossed. There was one boundary. They crossed it. And because they crossed that boundary, the people knew shame. They felt bad because of who they are. Of who they are. As that's compared or contrasted with guilt, where guilt is when we feel bad about something we've done. So it would have been appropriate for those people in the garden to feel guilty for eating the fruit, but they felt ashamed for being themselves. Like there's something totally wrong and broken about the people. And because they felt ashamed, then they also felt afraid of God. Like those first people, when we reach out for something more, more activities, more stuff, bigger house, more. When we reach out for those other things because we trust messages that tell us we're not enough. Or when we reach out for something better than what we have and we do that, because we doubt that we are enough as we are. When those are the reasons that we reach out, then we tend to let go of our relationships with the earth, with one another, with God. Because we're focused on better and more. Just to go back to talking about Catherine for a moment, because it ties in here. Catherine's biggest complaint about this pressure from teachers and her parents, especially her mom, uh, this, her biggest complaint to get busier and busier and more involved is that she can't do that and spend time with her friends. Catherine wants to strengthen and maintain those relationships because she gets joy in them. She finds support. She can be herself. She wants to keep learning and exploring new things, but not because she's afraid she might miss out on a college scholarship. She wants to keep learning and exploring new things because she loves to learn and explore new things. So Catherine teaches me often. So does the, so does my Zoe. Because they teach me because these messages in the world, they tell us, here's the messages I was talking about way, way, way back in the beginning, finally getting to it. These messages in the world, they tell us that somehow, uh, well, I don't know, maybe they say, you're too heavy, or you don't exercise enough, or you should eat healthier, uh, you should have a bigger house, or a nicer house, 
Oh, you need a new car. You should have a better yard. You got a lot of weeds in your yard. You really should have a better yard. Uh, you know, you should, you should, you should. All of these things. Those messages, they just keep coming at us all, all the time. And so often, it is easier to say, oh, okay, you're right, I am. I am too heavy. I need to do something about that. I need to focus on that. It's easier to trust those messages than to trust the promises from God. Promises that tell us something very different. That you, you are loved. God made you. God loves you. Or to trust the promise, there will be enough enough money, enough food, enough love to go around. Even when it seems like we can never get through our problems. Or to trust the promise that no matter what happens, God still loves you. We make mistakes. We do. And God still loves us. I think this is one of the reasons why it is so helpful to return to this community here and to worship together every week even in this weird time of coronavirus or covid that we are drawn together god brings us together to be reminded you are enough and even when we feel like hiding away from God, God comes to us. And even when we are afraid, God searches for us. And I think that's a pretty good place to start when we think about starting the Bible, right? We people will stumble. We will make mistakes. And we will even turn away from what God wants for us. But that never, ever, ever keeps God away from us. It does not. Today's Bible lesson ends with people hiding from God. It also ends with God right there in the garden, searching for the people that God made. Come out, come out, come out. Come back to me. Come back. I love you. So this week, as those annoying and pesky messages, those doubts, as they sneak in and tempt you, respond to those messages and those doubts. Tell them this, I am enough. You 
go away. Amen. Prayer for others. Take three deep breaths. God, you breathed life into us. With every breath, we thank you. Breathing in, we are grateful that you care for us. Breathing out, we commit to join you in caring for creation. You created the world with relationships. And now relationships are fractured. Altogether, we come to you seeking healing. For the places and people torn apart by violence. For the bodies and minds suffering. For the earth groaning under our weight. Altogether, we come to you seeking your justice. For those whose voices have been silent. For those whose lives have been stolen. For those whose worth is debated. Altogether, we come to you seeking your peace. For those who live daily under the pressure of expectations. For those whose lives are marked by hatred and division. For those who feel they are barely hanging on. Altogether, we come to you seeking your abundance. For those whose bodies need nourishment that they cannot provide. For those who struggle each day for crumbs. For those who believe they are flawed, unlovable, and not enough. And in these days, when a deep breath is both a privilege and a worry, We say together, we come to you seeking your help for all who cannot breathe. For people pressed down by the weight of racism. For people fighting disease. 
for people worrying about air quality. God, allow your breath of life to blow through our world, bringing fullness, hope, and joy. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, we invite you to share the peace of God with others, as has been for several months now. You may need to text someone. Maybe you need to send an email. Maybe you write a letter or do a VP call and say, peace be with you. And similarly, as sharing the peace has uh, adapted during coronavirus, so has our giving to our church, as bringing our offerings of money has changed. But here's what we believe. God is so generous, we can't even imagine how generous God is. But, and, and because God is so generous, that inspires us to be generous too. And so I ask you at this time to consider how God's generosity, how God's love and lavishness, how that inspires you and to respond to God's gifts, to send your financial gifts, to offer up your talents and your skills and your time, to bring those things to God. And to do those things through Bread of Life. Because here at Bread of Life, we're continuing to work on the mission that God has given us for all these years. Which is to say, God loves deaf people and their families. And here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people and their families too. So please, at this time, consider how you'll support Bread of Life. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My friends, God gathers us together in worship in amazing ways. Even though we're far apart, even in this time of coronavirus, God still gathers us together. And God sends us out into the world. It's not a mistake where we are. It's not a mistake where we land. 
the people that we come into contact with. God sends us out. So, as you're sent, receive this blessing. God knows each of us and God loves each one of us. God is always near. Just the way you are, God loves you. Even when we make mistakes, God loves us. Yesterday, today, and forever. Say it with me. Thanks be to God. Amen.